Old Testament survey. In order for us to fully grasp the New Testament and who Jesus is and why he had to come to the earth, we need to first grab the context, which is the entire Old Testament. Come on, take a look. Since the beginning of creation, God gave man a choice. You can either obey me or you can go your own way. Even though man decided to go his own way, God in his ferocious love decided to pursue after him. And this is how he did it. We see it in the garden of Adam and Eve. We see Cain killing Abel. We see Noah and God flooding the entire world to preserve the righteousness of his love. Job appears around that time. Ten generations later, we see Abraham making an oath to God to walk before him blamelessly, where God blesses him for not slaying his own son, even though he asked him to. That is Isaac. He has two kids, Jacob and Esau. They feud over each other birth, uh, the, over the birthright. Esau doesn't care. Jacob takes it. Esau gets upset because he can't get the blessing. So the blessing goes down his um, bloodline. His name is changed to Israel, which is the 12 tribes of Israel because God changes his name, his name after wrestling with him. So Israel's favorite son is Joseph, who is led into slavery by his evil brothers. But that's all a part of God's plan for the redemption of his people. They go into Egypt and become slaves for 400 years. And then Moses, whom is God's chosen, leads them out of Egypt to a place called Mount Sinai. But when Moses comes down after meeting with God on this mountain, he sees God's people worshiping the idol whom God foretells him and gets mad, breaks the Ten Commandments, destroys half of of God's people and then leads them into 40 years into the wilderness, which should have only took four weeks or so. This is where we get the book of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. After Moses dies, his upcoming person named Joshua takes over. And Joshua um, proclaims judges by God, which is Deborah, Gideon, and Samson. Deborah wasn't even a Jew. Gideon was a coward, becomes courageous by the Spirit of the Lord, and Samson is insane. <laughs> Around this time, we see Ruth. However, God's people still don't want to obey, and they still want a king because everyone else has one. So finally, God gives into it, says, you're going to regret this, and he gives God's people, Israel, the first king named Saul. At first, he starts off great. But then he struggles like Cain did, and he becomes very jealous of who's going to take his place, which is David, who slays Goliath. And for some odd reason, by his jealousy, people start following David, and Saul tries to kill him multiple times and fails because God, and he finally dies. David takes over the kingship and finally leads Israel the best he can, but he still falls short because something is wrong with the human heart. Anyways, when he dies, his son takes over named Solomon, and this is where you get all the beautiful wisdom books. However, this is also where God's kingdom divides on earth into two different uh, kingships. One is Israel and one is Judah. Israel is led by Jeroboam, which is the northern kingdom, Solomon's commander, and Rehoboam um, leads Judah, which is led by Solomon's son, the southern kingdom. And during this divide, God sends prophets such as Isaiah, uh, Micah, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Nahum to minister and prophesy to the southern kingdom. Whereas the northern kingdom, the prophets are Jonah, Hosea, and Amos to prophesy and warn God's people to Come back to faithfulness and stop becoming idolaters and live holy and, and good lives. But they don't listen and they don't repent. So God allows the Assyrians to come and conquer half the kingdom and wipe, out, wipe them out. Whereas Judah is the kingdom that does survive, barely. So during that time, the Babylonians come and wipe out the Assyrians. And their king 
is ruled by a man named Nebuchadnezzar, we see a whole new group of prophets led by Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Jeremiah wrote Lamentations and Obadiah. So for 50 years, they are in captivity to the Babylonians until the Persians come and sweep through and conquer the Babylonians around 330 BC. The Jews go back to their home, led by Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, to rebuild God's temple. More prophets appear, Haggai, Zechariah, and Joel, to prophesy to God's people. But some people don't go back to their native land, who are Jews. And this is where you get the book of Esther in Persia. Malachi is the last prophet to prophesy to God's people, his final warnings. And then when he passes away, around 450 BC, for about 450 years, nobody hears a word from God or any other prophet. And during this time, we get empires after empires and kings and kings after kingship ruling the entire world, such as the Persians and the Greeks. For over the course of seven years, they take over. And around 63 BC, Jerusalem, God's people, is finally overtaken by the Roman Empire. And throughout all this, it's very obvious that no matter who's in charge, something is wrong with the human heart. So, God finally shows himself up in a manger. And this is Old Testament survey and why we need a savior. Thank you for watching. God bless.